So if you look at the stock market, we are seeing all-time high records are broken. Okay, NASDAQ, S&P 500, Dow Jones, pretty much every single index is now breaking its all-time highs. When we look at the economy, which is still struggling, the unemployment is still going up, people are struggling to keep food on the table, and the retail sales are also dropping, but the stock market is still going up. So recession becomes a thing of the past because in 2022, 2023, everybody was talking about recession, you know, how we are going into recession because the yield curve was inverted and yield curve has been inverted for quite some time, but still we are not seeing recession. And recession now is, is you know, it is now a thing of the past. Nobody's talking about that. You know, if you look at the financial media, nobody is talking about recession anymore. So nobody's predicting, nobody's forecasting it. At the same time, I believe that the biggest crisis will come from the banking system okay so we already know that commercial real estate is a, uh, a brewing issue under the hood across all major commercial banks okay and the reason is because the commercial real estate has been struggling for quite some time already so if the valuations have gone down which affect their net operating margin which in, in fact affects their lending criteria as well so Typically, the lending on those commercial real estate is short term. You know, the the lender, um, the the borrower has to roll over the debt every two years, three years, uh, and refinance the debt. Okay, so if the commercial real estate prices are going down, which affect their overall valuations, which affect the net operating income. Okay, and then the cap rates are impacted as well. So when they go to refinance the property, the bank will look at the valuation and realize now the property is 20% cheaper what it used to be before now they will not be able to lend them maybe 80% of the LTV they will ask uh, the the borrower to come with more capital in order to meet the requirements so because of that a lot of banks are actually uh, holding that commercial real estate loan on the bank's balance sheet they're going into trouble because if those commercial real estate becomes default then there will be a big hole on the balance sheet of those banks holding commercial real estate loans. Now, we know that in Canada, we don't have a lot of uh, commercial real estate exposure you know, for Canadian banks, but in the US and in the Eurozone, there is a massive uh, you know, debt on the, on the banks, especially the regional banks, when it comes to commercial real estate loans. And don't kid yourself, even though Canadian banks do not, do not have a high ex exposure towards these commercial real estate loans, the banking system in the world, the global monetary system, it's a network of tightly connected banks, okay, like this. And if the banks in Eurozone are having some issues, this may become a contagion effect across the world because all of these banks are connected very closely. The liability on one bank's balance sheet, it could be an asset on other banks balance sheets so all of these banks have dependencies on each other when it comes to uh, making transaction because the global monetary system that we call it euro dollar system it is nothing but just a big network of uh, you know globally systematic banks and commercial banks which are lending between each other uh, and and lending into the economy across the world now so we saw a news came out from japan last week uh, which is one of their globally systematic important bank, GCIP banks, uh, Nuring Chicken, and they announced that they are liquidating around 63 billion uh, worth of sovereign bonds that consist of US treasuries and euro bonds. Why? Because those bonds are now uh, yielding negative cash flow because what happened in 2023 March when we saw um, Silicon Valley Bank go went bust, Signature Bank, uh, Credit Suisse, First Republic, all of these banks had something in common. What was the common thing? The common thing was the interest rate was quite low when they actually purchased those securities. Like in 2021, 2022, interest rate were pretty much uh, all time low. So they went out and bought those US treasuries, which was yielding quite a bit of uh, you know low interest rate. Now that interest rate has gone up. So that when you look at the bond, the price of the bond and the interest rate is inversely correlated. So if the interest rate has gone from from, from 0.25 to let's say uh, five and a half percent, the bond value has become much lower. So if the banks are yielding negative cash flow, they must sell those treasuries at a massive loss. So if Newton Chicken Bank is liquidating 63 billion worth of those securities, they're going to take a massive loss 
when they sell those treasuries in the market now what is their solution to fill that void they're going to buy clos collateralized loan obligations now if you don't know that the clos is a derivative market okay those derivatives are actually um, on the much higher side of the curve yes they can yield you seven percent interest rate but their risk to go default is much higher so if these banks like you know neuron chicken in japan and there could be hundreds of banks in eurozone or in the us as well if those banks are also in the same situation and they're selling you know pristine collateral like us treasuries just because they cannot sustain themselves because that uh asset is yielding ne negative cash flow they sell those bonds and they buy clos which is much higher risk that could be a much uh, bigger risk that they're going to take so the risk exposure to those banks is going to be exponentially higher okay and if you don't remember in 2008 clos was one of the major uh, catalysts that triggered the global financial crisis in 2008 that could be a repetition of the same issue that we saw in 2008 i'm not saying this is going to happen but when we look at these news when we look at under the hood how these bank banks are operating and trying to increase their risk exposure just because they cannot sustain the negative cash flow this seems like it is going into the same direction what we which we saw in 2008 now you may be thinking okay this is japan you know nothing nothing to do with canadian banks why should we care well my friend the banking system is tightly correlated tightly interconnected okay if something happened in eurozone if something happened in the u.s banking system it will have an spill over effect in canada as well and when something like this happened in the global banking system it contracts the credit okay it's a debt-based economy if the banks are seeing the trouble in the system and they are trying to um, you know protect their balance sheet by purchasing you know high-risk loans they will not be lending any more money out because the risk in the system is going to be much higher and when the risk in the system goes higher then the credit shrinks and when the credit shrinks this is the credit crunch and this is the recession that we have seen in 2008 as well as in 2012 in the european markets so we have to keep an eye on these news because this is going to tell us what's going to happen in the next six to twelve months okay if this becomes a repetition if this neurin chunkin bank becomes a repetition across other uh, countries europe us uh, you know, in, in, in other, than other Asian countries, then this is a sign that things are going to uh, get worse and the stuff is going to hit the fan. Okay. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Put your comments down below. It's a slightly complex topic. I tried to oversimplify it, but keep an eye on these news um, because this is going to impact the overall economy, especially the banking system. And if the banking system uh, becomes uh, a, a crisis, this will shrink the credit. And when the credit is shrunk, the economy will, do, will go down definitely. Anyway, let me know what you think about that. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. If you are an investor in the US, in Canada, or in Europe, and you are considering investing into Dubai real estate market, this video is for you because we have a platform called Stake, which allows you to invest into the residential real estate market and start earning rental income right away without going through a lengthy documentation process or coming up with a heavy down payment. Stake is built upon this the concept of crowdfunding so it is democratizing the entire investment strategy and, and allows you to own a single unit of the entire investment portfolio so you don't have to own the entire property right you can be part of the pool that can actually own a piece of property a piece of real estate so that allows you to start with as low as 2000 dirhams and you can slowly ramp up so as you start investing into it you can not only own a bit of bit of real estate but you also get a portion of the rental income on monthly basis so it's a passive investment strategy diversifying your portfolio from traditional north american or european markets into dubai which is hustling and bustling and growing very fast and allows you to build your wealth over time so so don't delay there is a link down there in the description if you click on this it will give you free 200 dirhams in your account right away to start with and you can thank me later